Today we're talking about the future of work and we've been joined here today by the New South Wales Minister for Jobs, Investment, Tourism and Western Sydney, Stuart Ayres. Stuart, welcome to Torrens University. It's great to be here, Chris. Thanks very much for joining us. And the future of work has been a hot topic, particularly given the global pandemic. So you took on your remit in 2019. You had an idea of where you would like to go with that remit. And then 2020 arrives. How difficult was it to keep the wheels turning and to keep the plans on track? Well, I think in the year of 2020, the year of COVID, where lots of people have had to adjust their businesses. I think pivot is like the word that is underlined, exclamation marked, in bold, italic. It's the word that everyone's had to adjust to. But what I also think COVID has, has tested leaders on is whether their original plans and concepts were sound. And so I think if the, your strategy was, was clear, it was focused and people knew what they were working towards, they could adjust to the dynamic environment that COVID brought in. But if your plans were weak, then they probably got exposed quite dramatically. So in New South Wales, we've had a really strong focus around precinct-based developments. Um, we've got a lot of infrastructure investment happening around New South Wales and the city. Um, and we've tried to really leverage that around where we can generate new jobs. So the Commonwealth Government's investing billions of dollars into a new airport. We're investing billions of dollars in connecting that airport uh, to the rest of Sydney, and that then generates opportunities for jobs to come off the back of that. Uh, we're looking to leverage existing assets in places like uh, Parramatta, where we've got probably one of the world's great medical research uh, districts, and we really want to be able to drive growth in, in that sector as well. And then we're also leveraging our fantastic transport network and central station to create our own version of a technology hub, uh, really leveraging the concentration of uh, tech-related businesses, global headquarters, right on the southern edge of the Sydney CBD, where there's this wonderful, great sort of clash of cultures. So those Precinct strategies were sound at the beginning and we've continued to stick close to those. But we've also had to adapt to a number of the things that have happened around us. And we've had to work with industry as they've had to work with their own workforce, including what the New South Wales government has had to do with its over 400,000 employees to adapt to a, a very different work environment. And I think over time, the pendulum has uh, moved a little bit. We, we all had to embrace flexibility very, very quickly. Um, then we've had to work out what you trade off from a productivity perspective. And we've also learned a little bit more about how we can adapt to technology. And we've got better at it over time. We've also worked out what happens well in the office and what doesn't. And whilst we all embrace this concept of flexibility at the start, the more isolated we got from our teams, we also learned very quickly how important teams and bouncing into each other is and collaboration and sharing ideas and how that can become quite productive. So um, strategy, I think, was sound. It's held all the way through the disruptions and now we've just got to keep going. And now we're seeing the shoots of recovery. We're seeing borders opening, a vaccine on the horizon. How do you keep those shoots of recovery growing? Do you look to a certain industry or industries to drive the recovery? So in my portfolios, we've had a lot of areas that have been devastatingly impacted by COVID. Um, restrictions have uh, made it very difficult to operate businesses that have been in the tourism space, the hospitality space, accommodation, uh, arts and cultural activities have been um, incredibly impacted by, by what's happened with COVID and, and the government restrictions that have been prioritising people's health. So our focus has been get on top of the health challenge first, um, make your community safe, ensure that your health system has got the resources to be able to deal with any uh, potential surge in COVID. And then once you've established that, work very closely with the community about removing the virus from the community. And that's been a strategy we've adopted over the last six to nine months. It's worked quite well. We've now got to a point where we've got no community infection, We've also got a health system that's incredibly well resourced uh, and that allows us to start to roll back those restrictions. And when you roll back those restrictions, that builds confidence in the economy. And when the economy and businesses are confident, they start employing people again. And we've seen that with customers moving out right across regional New South Wales. There's a surge in activity in regional New South Wales in the tourism sector. Uh, rollback in restrictions here in Sydney has allowed more people to go to cafes, restaurants, bars. 
Uh, we've now got uh, sporting contests happening again. Australia's leading, in fact, Sydney's leading the world when it comes to theatre productions, uh, where we've got uh, Pippin and Frozen. It's literally the biggest theatre show anywhere in the world happening right here in Sydney. Um, so all of those things are really building confidence. And confidence means that those little green shoots start to grow uh, into really strong businesses again. And it also allows people to get ready for when things like JobKeeper start to come off. So there's enough resilience in each of those businesses now. So a real strong focus on building confidence because without businesses being confident, they don't employ people. Um, at Torrens University, we have hundreds of hospitality and tourism students who would be midway through their courses, looking to the future quite nervously. What would you say to them to give them cause for optimism that 2021 will see a recovery in that space particularly? Yeah, I'm incredibly optimistic about the tourism sector. In fact, I know this might sound a little bit unusual, but I'm more optimistic about the tourism sector now than what I was pre-COVID. Uh, I think there'll be some quite substantial shifts in the way customers and consumers and travellers think about what they do. We've been presented this wonderful, marvellous opportunity to allow Australians to reconnect with their own country. Australia is a, a travelling nation. Australians have been going overseas for many, many years. We're probably the best travelling nation in the world. And it's also meant that um, from a tourism perspective, we're actually a trade deficit nation. And what that means is Australians spend more money travelling overseas than what the world spends coming to Australia. So all of a sudden, if Australians aren't travelling overseas, and whilst we've had a uh, contraction in the economy, there's been a lot of opportunity for Australians to spend money at home. And there's a bit of rediscovering your backyard happening at the moment. People are going to regional New South Wales, they're discovering our fantastic food and wine regions, um, they're getting out to mountain locations, they're doing nature escapes, they're um, holidaying in their own cities with the concept of a staycation. And this is really given uh, the tourism sector an opportunity to reconnect with Australians. And I think post-COVID, that's going to encourage more Australians to continue to holiday at home. But more importantly, it's going to give Australians as a nation, as citizens, the opportunity to tell their story better to visitors. Um, and that's what people are ultimately after. T tourism's about creating experiences, unforgettable, memorable experiences. And I think we're going to be better placed to do that. And then the other thing that I think is going to happen is at, when people are released and kind of unshackled from COVID, and here in Australia, we only know what, what we know, but we're doing so much better than many locations around the world. I think there's going to be this surge in people wanting to get out of home, get out of their town um, and go and see um, places that they've not seen before. The concept of what's on your bucket list is like, I'm going to go and do that. I never know when I'm going to get disrupted again. And for a country like Australia, that presents just the most amazing opportunities. So if you're a young person or it doesn't matter really what age you are and you're thinking tourism and hospitality is where your career is, there's probably never been a better time to be training for that right now because the surge is going to come straight off the back of your, your training period, your education period. And I think there'll be really solid jobs growth uh, in the tourism and hospitality sectors through 2021, but particularly 22, 23, uh, where I'm expecting us to see really solid growth in those years. Excellent, that's cause for optimism. The future of work, we've discussed that at length at Torrens and um, over the past few months, you could argue that's been accelerated by COVID. So how do you stay on top of developments in that area and again, foster growth in those new growing areas? So some of these principles haven't changed. We've embraced the concept of flexibility and we've been talking about it in the workforce for a long time. COVID forced us to adopt technology faster to build flexibility. But at the same time, we've also learnt that there's limitations to that. So if you're in an employment area where the office is an important part of what you do, you've probably learnt that you can do things outside of the office that you either didn't trust yourself or you know, the management team didn't think you'd be as productive. And now we've learned that you can actually do some of those things. But we've also learned that you need to be around your team members and your colleagues as well. And so I don't think that you're going to see, I think commercial buildings will still exist. I'm still quite confident about commercial buildings and CBDs and the agglomeration of jobs. But what I think happens inside those buildings is going to change. I think um, teams, HR uh, leaders, 
managers are going to start reshaping their work environment to foster greater degrees of collaboration, embrace flexibility, so that you might have people moving through the office space in a very different way than just going to their fixed workstation. And so I think that's going to change a lot as well. But I also think if you're not in an office environment, if you're in hospitality, if you're in travel, if you're in food and beverage, I, I don't see too many changes in those locations. I think it's still going to be focused on high quality customer service. It's still going to be focused on delivering a wonderful, fantastic experience. Um, you want to be able to chase high yield, so quality experiences are going to become more important. So in that tourism and hospitality and accommodation sector, I'm not seeing a change of the work environment um, from what we know it. What I do think though, there's going to be a craving of quality. So the cream really will rise to the top in the post-COVID world. And here at Torrens University, we're the fastest growing in Australia. We have nearly 20,000 students at the last count. What should we be teaching them to prepare them for this future world of work? What are the skills they'll need moving forward? Yeah, network, network and network again. Um, you're never too young to get out and engage in the industry. So you'll learn the, the practical and the theoretical in your course studies, uh, but really what's going to allow you to open up opportunities is your capacity to engage with people. And so every opportunity as a young student, I would be encouraging you to get along to event days, uh, anything that allows you to meet industry operators, um, the way you think about um, your own personal time, like ring people who run hotels, ring people who run vineyards, ask them you know, what their challenges are, go up and visit them and find out what their, their trends are, what are the things they look for in employees. Um, building that personal network is going to be um, so critical for the future employee. Yeah, invest in your, in your base skill set, invest in your degree and that qualification, but beyond that, it's your personal experiences that are going to separate you from anyone else who's after that same type of job, or more importantly, the way that you're going to have an impact on a person who's buying that service or buying that experience from you in a hotel, in a vineyard, in a restaurant, whether you're writing even commercial plans, put yourself in the mind of the person who's buying that service. And if you've been able to build that network of individuals that have shared those ideas with you, then I think you're going to be pretty well placed. Excellent. And this school year has been disrupted like no other, and there'll be a number of students watching this still not sure what the future will hold for them. What would your advice be to them as they start their, their university path, essentially? Yeah, stay the course. Um, in a world that's incredibly disrupted and things are moving around quickly, it's really important that you've got something stable in your life. Um, and for young people starting study, that, that can be that. It doesn't often feel like it at the beginning. You might have been in class with you know, 15, 20, 30 other classmates. You're on campus. You, you kind of love that campus interaction. If you've been disrupted from that, the, the additional things that you love about studying aren't always in your life. So sometimes in life, you just got to grind out the hard days. Uh, and, and I think we're going to develop a generation of incredibly resilient workers. Uh, who might understand that concept. Not every single day at work is going to be the best day you've ever had at work. Sometimes you've just got to knuckle down and really grind out the, the, the tough ones. You're going to learn a lot about that. In fact, we've all learned a lot about that. So if you're having second thoughts, I think the second thought should be, it hasn't been perfect, but let, grind it out, get to the end of, your, end of your course, get to the end of your qualification, and you'll be, you'll be better for that at the end. When you stepped out of university, did you have a clear idea what the future would hold for you? And has it rung true? Is that the way it's gone? Uh, I had a pretty fair idea of where I was going to go. I, it's fair to say that a career in politics wasn't necessarily on the agenda at the time frame that it happened. I, I actually, truth be told, wasn't that interested in state politics at all. It, it kind of presented itself as an opportunity. Um, but my study and then my work um, really gave me a quite a community and practically focused way of doing this job and I've, I've tried to never lose that. Um, at the, ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm a representative of a community and my job is to work hard and service them. That community evolves a little bit as you become a minister because you're more related to industries and stakeholders. Um, but yeah, my, my career path has been on a trajectory that is pretty similar to what I thought it would be when I left 
university, just a slightly different job, a slightly different leadership role in the public environment as a member of parliament as opposed to in a, in a corporate environment where you, you might be the head of a division or uh, the, the head of a particular unit or the head of a business. Excellent. That's a really strong message of recovery and optimism. Stuart Ayres, thanks for joining us today. Thanks Good luck with 2021. Hopefully it um, is a smoother ride than 2020 for all of us. But thanks so much for joining us today. Cool. Thank you very much.